for many of us uh, in life, we usually don't learn how to fix problems until we have to face problems. And this is true in all different areas of life. Uh, this is the reason why most of you do not know how to fix a calculus problem because you haven't had to face a calculus problem yet. And for the overachievers in the room, if you're like, I'm already in calc, then most of us don't know how to fix a quantum physics problem because we haven't had to face a quantum physics problem yet. Uh, this happens with mechanical stuff. Like most of us don't know how to fix a car because we haven't had to face that problem. Usually someone else will do it for us. And nowhere is this more true than probably in our relationships. Uh, most of us do not know how to fix problems in our relationships because we haven't really had to face problems in our relationships. Or we make the mistake of when it actually is time to face a problem, we've never learned how to fix a problem and we're playing catch up. For example, uh, whether it is a fight that you have with your parents, for some of you, you have the same fight with your parents over and over and over again. You already know what they're going to say. You already know how the conversation is going to go. Whether it is a breakdown in trust that you've had with the friendship where they used to be a friend, they used to be someone who's really close to you, and now you guys can't even be in the same room together because of what they said or because of what they did, and you know, like, I just, I do not like them. This, there is nothing good between us. Oftentimes... When we have relational issues, when we have relationship problems, when they said this or they did this, uh, most of us don't know how to fix those problems until we have to face those problems. And the danger in that is that when you're not prepared for something, you'll usually just end up panicking and making a bad decision. When you get into a relationship issue, when you and your parent, when you guys have the fight that goes off again, a lot of times we're not thinking about how to prepare for that moment so in the moment, we just do whatever feels best. We just lash out in anger. We just say something that we might end up regretting later. When we have friendships and they start gossiping about us or they say something that disrespects us, normally we just go towards what feels most natural, which is, oh, I'm not going to let them say that or I'm going to say something back. And a lot of times we don't know how to fix relationship problems. And then we face relationship problems and we find ourselves really confused why things are breaking down. You, you know, I, uh, I get to talk to young people pretty often, and uh, when they tell me things about like relationship problems that they're having, I'm always fascinated when people are surprised. Like when young people are like, I just, I, I can't believe it, but I keep on having the same problem in this relationship. Like this person, I'm just, I'm so shocked that this is happening. A lot of times I don't say it, but I'm thinking like, this is life. In life, you're gonna have relationships, and there's gonna be times where they're going good, and there's gonna be times where they go bad. That is life. It is, it is a natural part of life. So the more prepared you are for when you face the problem, the better off you're going to be. And thankfully for you and I, if you are a Christian in the room, uh, we actually have a record of God inspiring people to write down how you and me can reconcile our relationships when they start to break down. We actually have thousands of years of history of examples where you and I can say, okay, when I am in a problem, when I am facing a relationship issue, what can I do? And last week, we looked at a verse in Ephesians, which is kind of the, the theme verse for all that we're looking at this month. I want to show you a couple passages really fast, and then uh, I'll make some comments about them. Look at these passages in Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter, we'll throw up the, the next slide. Uh, it says, don't be proud at all. This is the Apostle Paul writing. Be completely gentle, be patient, put up with one another in love. He says, get rid of all hard feelings, anger and rage. Stop fighting and lying. Don't have anything to do with that kind of hatred. We'll just keep that slide up there for a second. Here's what I want you to notice. There are no qualifiers in any, in any of these verses. Paul doesn't say, hey, be patient until you run out of patience and then you can go off on them. Paul doesn't say, uh, get rid of anger and rage except for when they lash out at you and then you can lash out back at them. There's, there's no qualifiers. He expects you to just do this all the time. There's one verse that actually puts it really clear, but in this verse there is a qualifier and you'll see it. We'll go to Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 18. It says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Now, here, there is a qualifier, okay? You can see it in the very beginning. If it's possible. Apparently, for Paul, he recognizes that, hey, some of your relationships, 
it might not be possible for you guys to live at peace. It might not be possible for you guys to be best friends. It might not be possible for you to have like that, per- that picture perfect ideal relationship. But then he goes on to say, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, as far as it depends on you, I want you to live at peace with everyone. You see, if you take the Ephesians passages that we just read, and then you take this Romans passage, uh, and we're going to look at some more passages later on, but Christian teaching, it tells you and I that my relationships are my responsibility, that your relationships are actually your responsibility, that when you look at the, the landscape of your relationships, when you look at how you relate to your parents, when you look at your friends, when you look at the different relationships in your life, that those relationships are actually your responsibility. Paul says, as much as it depends on you, and this is really important because uh, for many people, the human tendency is not to take personal responsibility in their relationships, but to just point the finger at everyone else when they're having problems. This is, this is the human tendency for most people, is that when we're having an issue, we naturally go, well, yes, it's because, of, it's because of them. It's because of what they've said. It's because of what they did. And that's why I'm having this issue with them. Like, you probably haven't had a conversation with your friend before where your friend came up to you and, you know, they were like, hey, I, I'm having this issue with my parents. And it's because it's just my pride. My pride keeps getting in the way. And I just, man, like, I really don't like being told what to do. And it just, it really bothers me, and I just don't show enough respect, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, that's probably not the conversation you've had. The conversation you've had has gone, oh my gosh, I don't understand why they keep doing this. I don't understand why they would say that. When Paul says, okay, in your relationships, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And it's kind of the difference between looking through a mirror, I'm sorry, looking through a window or looking into a mirror, okay? I'm going to use this as a metaphor. you got to run with me. This is a window. That's a mirror. When you look through a window, you are looking through a window to see beyond yourself at, to see everyone else. That's what you do in a window. You don't look at yourself in a window. You look at everyone else through a window. In a mirror, you look at yourself. You look into a mirror to see yourself. And in relationships, many of us, our natural tendency is to look through windows. Many of us, when we're in a relationship with, 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 in all our relationships, when you have problems with your parents, when you have problems with your friends, our tendency, this is just all of us as humans, myself included, is to stand here and to go, okay, I know I'm having this issue with them, and it's really because they, it's because of what they said. It's because of how they treated me. It's because of how they started this thing. It's because, it's because they always do this. This is, this is just who they are. This is how they act. And we kind of stand in front of windows in our relationships where we just look at everyone else but not at ourselves. And when Paul's writing, he says, hey, as far as it depends on you. In other words, look, I know you want to stand here, but I kind of want you to come over here. And I want you to ask yourself, the, as far as as it depends on you. I want you to ask yourself the question, um, in my relationships, have I done everything I can do for peace? Have I done everything that I can do for peace? And if it, initially you go, well, like, well, well yeah, but, but they, they, they started this and they, 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 wanted, they, they, they didn't accept my apology. I can feel Paul's like, wait a second, you, you want to go back over here. You want to go back over here in your relationships. I need you to come back over here and ask yourself the question, have I done everything that I can do for peace? Have I done everything that I can do with my parents? Have I done everything that I can do with that friendship that's breaking down? Have I done everything that I can do for peace? And what I love about Paul is for Paul, you have to remember, like his standard is Jesus, okay? So if right now when I ask the question and I go, hey, have I done everything that I can do? If in your brain, if you went, yeah, I have. Like, okay, just slow down. Because for Paul, his example of the the person that we're supposed to follow in relationships is actually a man who went to a cross for his enemies. So when when you ask yourself the question, uh, have I done everything I can do? We have to remember that that question is supposed to reflect the person of Jesus. There's There's a story in Matthew chapter 18, 
And uh, if you come to small groups uh, this Wednesday, part of your like homework assignment is going to be to read Matthew chapter 18. And if you don't come to small groups, then part of your homework assignment, I'm assigning it right now, is to read Matthew chapter 18 this week. Uh, because in Matthew chapter 18, you actually have one full chapter where Jesus just does uh, several teachings on relationships. Matthew chapter 18 is Jesus talking to people about how they're supposed to treat other people. And he, he, uh, he addresses it from several different angles. And there's a story in Matthew chapter 18 where Peter wants to know, hey, Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive someone? It's kind of like if you read the chapter, it's kind of like Jesus ends up getting Peter and he brings him over here and he brings him to the mirror. And Peter's like, okay, take personal responsibility. Like, look at myself. Okay, I get it, Jesus. But question, how many times... Do I have to forgive someone if they wrong me? It's like another way of saying, how long do I have to stand here before I can go back over here and start looking at them and saying, hey, this is the last straw you've done too much. And Jesus tells this story in Matthew chapter 18 that we don't have time to read, but you're going to read it this week. He tells a story about a king who has servants. And he says that this king calls his servants together. And he wants to settle his accounts with his servants. This king finds one of his servants who owes him 10,000 talents is what the Bible says. If you do like a fun calculation to try to convert that into today's currency, it's a couple billion dollars. So I don't know how this guy leveraged his positions to get to a couple billion dollars. But Jesus says, I just need you to imagine there's a king and someone owes him a couple billion dollars. He calls this servant in and he tells the servant, pay me back. Servant says, I don't have the money, so the, the king decides, I'm going to sell you and your family, and I'm just going to make whatever I can off you because you're never going to be able to make that much money. You're never going to be able to pay me back. And the story says that the servant ends up falling to his knees, and he begs the king, please give me time, and I'll pay back the debt. It, the king knows that he can't pay it back. The guy goes, please give me time. So out of the generosity of the king's heart, he ends up saying, you know what? I'm going to cancel your debt. You can go, and you can live free. Very next scene, this servant, he leaves the king's palace, and he goes and he finds one of his servants, and he finds a guy who owes him a couple thousand dollars. He owed a couple billion. He finds someone who owes him a couple thousand. And the story says that this servant ends up taking the dude who owes him money, choking him, and telling him, pay me back everything right now. And his servant ends up falling to his knees and saying, please give me time and I'll pay you back the money. He absolutely can end up paying him back. The other guy, he was never going to be able to pay back his billions. This guy, if he gives him time, he'll be able to make up for it. But instead, this servant says, nope, throws him in jail. He basically says, you have to work enslaved until you're able to pay me back. And the king ends up finding out about this. So he calls the, the first servant back to himself, and he asks him, he goes, I forgave you of so much why did you not extend that same forgiveness to your servant? And Jesus tells this story to Peter, and Peter goes like, hey, so how many, how many times do I have to forgive someone? I just want to be clear, like, what's, what's the limit? And Jesus tells this story about a king who's forgiven a debt of billions and who now expects his servants to forgive a debt of thousands. In other words, Peter, you have to forgive people to the same extent that I've forgiven you. And by the way, you're never even going to be able to do that. It doesn't come close. The, th the stuff that you have to forgive, it kind of equates to thousands when what I've forgiven you equates to billions. Says, Peter, you're thinking about how much, okay, how much do I have to forgive someone? Peter, you've actually been forgiven so, so much. So your model when you, go, when you go and you ask yourself the question, have I done everything I can do for peace? You have to consider me. You have to consider what I've done. Sometimes, you know, when, in our relationships we have issues, and again, whether it's parents, friends, wh whoever it is, boyfriend, girlfriend, and you kind of go to this, to this space where you're like, okay, well, all right, well, I'll take personal responsibility, but, but like what if they started it? Ask yourself the question, how would Jesus finish it? Like, we're talking about the dude who died on a cross for his enemies. You really think that Jesus is going to get into an argument with someone, and he, once they say something that's too far, it's like, all right, meet me in the bathroom at lunch, meet me at the park after school, like, we're going to settle this. Like, you, you, you really think that someone posts something about you, and all of a sudden now, like, you have biblical precedent to go, okay, well, watch what I post, watch what I share, watch what I spread, watch how I get them back. This is a man 
who literally gave his life for his enemies. Sometimes I know with parents, like, you have issues and everything inside of you just wants to cut them off, give them the cold shoulder, and just basically you'll go through the motions at home, but you, will, you, you won't respect them in your heart. You, you won't actually honor their requests. It's like, you know what? I've given up on that relationship. I'm just going to go through the motions. Paul says when you ask yourself this question, you have to remember that Jesus is your example. When it comes to how to forgive people, when it comes to how to handle conflict, we're talking about an example. We're talking about someone who set an example who literally gave his life for his enemies. So when you take responsibility, um, it's a big, big ask in terms of what you actually have to do to make things right. And when it comes to what this actually looks like, this is where I said I, I want to be super practical. Like I, I want to try to be as helpful as possible because I can say in your relationships, like, hey, take responsibility. And you're like, okay, maybe you're down. I can say, hey, Jesus is a great example. And you can say, okay, that's cool. But what does this actually look like when, you've, when you're in a fight? What does this actually look like when you're in an argument? What does this actually look like when you are having a problem with someone who you care about, someone who you want to pursue a relationship with, but for whatever reason, there's issues right now? I'm going to give you three steps. In Matthew chapter 18, Jesus actually gives us three steps for how we can resolve conflicts, for how we can address problems. They are not easy, but it's God's way of how we can fix problems. And I guarantee you that if you will give these things a try, if you will try to follow these steps one by one, your relationships will be so much better for it. You can actually face problems and expect to fix problems when you do things God's way. So step number one uh, is to talk to them. Talk to them. This is what Jesus says, uh, Matthew 18 says, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. And if they listen to you, you've won them over. We'll leave that up for a second. Here's what I want you to notice. Jesus says, hey, when you have a problem with someone, when, when, when there is an issue in the relationship, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to go to that person. I don't want you to go to your friends and talk about it and gossip about it. I don't, I, I don't want you to, 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 to go on social and just rant about it. I actually want you to go to that person. I actually want you to, 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 to go to that person. I'd even say in person, like in person. Don't, like texting arguments are very difficult. I've never seen them go really well, okay? That's like a side tip. That, that's not in the original Greek, but I would just say that's helpful. Go to that person and talk to them about the problem. Man, I cannot tell you how many times I have had conversations with people, and they're like, I, I am in such a fight with this other person. And I'm like, man, well, what happened when you guys talked? And they're like, oh, we haven't talked. I'm like, wait. I thought you said you're in a fight with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we're, we're not talking right now. Uh, you are not going to solve a problem that you won't address. In your relationships, if you actually want to fix a problem, it's going to require you to face that problem. If you're having a problem with a parent, it's actually going to require a tough conversation with your parent. If you're having a problem with a friend and there's stuff that you know like they've always done and it just it gets under your skin and you've never really been able to address it and you just like feel like ah, I just like I just got to ignore it or whatever. You're not going to be able to fix a problem that you're not willing to face. Jesus says when you're having a problem, go talk to them. And then here's step number two. If you try talking to them and it doesn't work, you can talk to uh, we'll go to the next slide. You can talk to uh, other people who can help you talk to them. You can talk to other people who can help you talk to them. Jesus keeps on going. But if they will not listen, okay, so you, you had a conversation with them and they won't listen. Take one or two others along so that every matter uh, may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Here's what I want you to notice. He says when you talk to other people, they should be people who can help you solve the problem. I'd say it this way. If someone can't help you, if someone can't help, they probably don't need to hear what's going on. That's actually a great gauge for am I gossiping or not. Uh, if I'm talking to someone about a problem and they can help me with the problem, usually it's not gossip. It's me trying to get help with the problem. But if I'm just talking to my friends who are going to gas me up, if I'm just talking to my friends about what they did and all they're going to do is just go like, yes, yeah, that, that is, I can't believe them. They're crazy. Like, man, they're trash. Don't talk to them anymore. If you're going to talk to people who are just going to gas you up, you 
are not going to actually get the help that you need to solve the problem. Jesus says when you talk to someone, it should be someone who can help you go and have this conversation a better way. We should actually have people in our lives who love us enough, who are willing to tell us some things that are uncomfortable at times. If all your friends ever do is just support you and clap for you, uh, you might end up walking into a bad decision and not even realizing it because you had nobody around who loved you enough to go, hey, uh, you, you keep on looking through this. And when you, when you talk to someone who can help, like you're going to say, hey, this is what they're doing and this is what they said and this is, this is, this is what's going on. And someone who can help is going to actually help you come over here and go, yeah, but this is what you did. And this is how you've played a part in this. And this is where you should probably apologize. This has happened to me before where I've been in conversations with people. I've been in conversations with students and, like, same thing where, you know, it's like, man, I just, I, so-and-so, they, they, they really, really bothered me and we're not talking because of it. And I think sometimes people are surprised when I'm like, oh, well, it definitely sounds like you, you're part of the problem here. It's like, what? Like, no one wants to hear that. But Jesus says, if you actually want to solve the problem, talk to someone who can help you solve the problem. And then last step, if you talk to them and it doesn't work, and then you talk to someone else who can help you talk to them and it doesn't work, last step is to treat them like someone made in the image of God. This is a weird verse. Listen to this. Jesus says, if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Now, again, I said it's a weird verse, especially kind of in the way that we think about uh, church and gatherings like this. Remember, in context, Jesus is helping disciples address sin amongst each other. We are taking the conflict resolution principles and we are applying them to our lives. But in context, he's going, hey, when you have people, when you have believers, confessing Christians, who are repeatedly sinning, and they're saying like, oh yeah, I love God, but they are blatantly living lives of sin and blatantly living lives where they're not loving towards themselves or towards other people. He says at some point, you can actually tell the community of believers that they're a part of. Now, you got to remember that their, you know, version of a church was like a dozen people sitting in a home, okay? So it's probably not, if you're having a problem with someone, like, I'm not going to come up here on the stage and be like, man, they are, they are just, at, they are way out of line. That's, that's not what's going on. He says, you can, you can address it with a community, but then he goes on, and then I want you to treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Now, uh, if you're not super familiar with the Bible, pagans and tax collectors, long story short, they were people who were normally excluded from the Jewish community. Uh, they were excluded from God followers just because of the way that the uh, Judaism was set up at the time. And I don't, we don't have a lot of time to go into it. But if you look at the life of Jesus, when Jesus engaged with pagans and tax collectors, he actually showed them love. He actually showed them grace. As a matter of fact, the dude who wrote down this story for us, Matthew, Matthew was a tax collector who Jesus invited him to follow him and to be his disciple. So when Matthew, so when Jesus says, okay, if you can't solve the problem with someone, treat them like a pagan or a tax collector, uh, Matthew's actually saying, or I'm sorry, Jesus is actually saying, maybe that relationship, maybe right now, it's not going to be what you think, what you'd hope it can be. Maybe right now, that relationship, it's not gonna look as perfect as you can imagine it in your head, but there is never a reason for you to not treat someone like they are still made in the image of God. There is never a time where you say, oh, okay, they didn't want to accept the apology, well, fine. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna spread everything that I can about them, fine. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna respect them anymore, fine. That's, that is it. Jesus says, I want you to treat them like someone where, hey, they may be on the outside, but they are always someone who is made in the image of God. This is, if, you're, if you are a follower of Jesus, this is actually our model for how we solve conflicts. In every area of your life, in every relationship, we actually are people who take responsibility and then who follow the steps laid out by Jesus. And I want to say this. Um, if you are a Christian, please, this is, this is part of the big message or the big idea this morning. Please do not fall for the trap of handling your relationships the way the rest of the world handles theirs. If you are a Jesus follower, don't fall into the trap and the cycle 
of going, okay, well, what do I want? When do I want it? What do I feel? How should I, do, how, how should I go about it? A lot of times in life, the people who love their life, and if you compare them with the people who hate their life, a lot of times what, they, what they're really saying is they love their relationships or they hate their relationships. And for so many of us, I think we can miss out on one of God's biggest blessings for our lives if we do not figure out how to actually handle conflict in our relationships. Because then your life will just be a series of events where you had a friend and then you lost a friend because you guys had the same problem or you had the same fight that you've had with all your other friends. You had this relationship and it was going well, but then it broke down again. If you are a Christian, God's desire for your life is that you would live in a community with relationships that are life-giving, with relationships that are helpful, with relationships that, yes, are challenging, but that you would understand what you can do to take responsibility and to actually address problems when they happen. Jesus says you, you talk to them, and then maybe you get help for, for, from some other people, and no matter what, you always treat them like someone who's made in the image of God. If you will do those things, I promise you, the, the way that you try to solve conflict in your relationships, it'll get so much better. And remember, Paul says, the, the verse that we started with, and here's where I'll close, Paul says, if it's possible, and maybe I should give one disclaimer real quick. Um, I Obviously, what I'm talking about is I'm talking about like regular relationships where uh, you have like two parties who are engaging. I obviously don't mean that this applies uh, to you know situations of abuse, or at least it doesn't apply in the same way. So if you're like, I have a parent who I just like, I don't know anything, you know, or, I have no interaction with them. Like, how you carry this out, um, I would encourage you to talk to a leader to figure out how this actually applies to your life. But when it comes to friendships, when it comes to fr relationships with your parents, where you just keep on running into the same problem over and over again, um, there is a better way. And God actually wants that for you. And I think for so many of us, it can be easy in our relationships to just think that, oh, we just need to, like, not fight. And hopefully we're, like, doing the Christian thing. God actually wants you to have really healthy relationships, but those don't happen without you addressing the problems. And like I said, uh, if you have questions or you want to figure out, like, okay, well, well, what does this actually look like for my situation? All the leaders uh, who are in the room, the people with badges on, we would love to have a conversation with you. The game don't start till 3.30. We're going to dismiss right now, so you have time to have a conversation and then to still make it home for chips and salsa before kickoff. Um, but my relationships are my responsibility. I don't want anybody in here, anybody a part of our community to grow up with the mindset that goes, man, I, like all my relationships suck. At some point, you got you to gotta look in the mirror and say, Jesus, what is my role in all this and how can I respond?